Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. This is how to get the things you need, but to slash expenses at the same time. Okay, I saved my tea so I don't have to pay for a beverage. So this video is 50% off meat, carnivore food, Markdown frozen food and dairy. So um, I have been watching uh, some videos and uh, the people are suffering from the inflation and I thought, why don't you mark get your food marked down or on sale? So wouldn't it be so much better if you had a budget of $100 per month for meat, $25 a week, as opposed to 200, and it can easily be done. So, you know, getting $200 worth of food as opposed to 100. So today I took a little trip to uh, Ralph's. Get this out. Uh, and so, I was looking around for beef because I've been on the carnivore diet on and off. I can't go on it full time because it gets to me. But um, I bought these uh, chicken legs and thighs marked down for uh, $5.24. I used to buy five pounds of these chicken legs and thighs. Not this big, but this is a uh, four point uh one nine pounds and it was 10.43 and so i got it for five dollars and so then uh, i baked this chicken and these legs are like one and a half pounds so this is enough for uh two meals i won't be starving and it's cheap so figure uh, five dollars for three of them would be about a dollar twenty-five or so each. Think about like Dollar Tree. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna cut mine in half because it's pretty late, and I will probably just eat half of this tonight. This isn't a very sharp knife. Oh gosh. I'm hacking my chicken up. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm doing housework and I have these miserable jobs and one of the miserable jobs is the food storage. And so why that is so miserable is I'm packing it under all of it. I just baked this, it's hot. I, I packed it, it's all cans now. So I packed it all under the kitchen table and I, I mean dining room table and I went through each thing can by can by can to see if it was ready to expire. And then if it is, I move it into the kitchen. And then that's why my kitchen is messed up. I'm cleaning that too. Why can't I find the darn joint? Where is it? big fat mess. <laughs> All right. The chicken looks good though. Take a look at the chicken. Nice and juicy, cheap. Enough for two meals. The other thing I bought today 
I mentioned to you guys several times, if you keep your eye out for the good hot dogs, these hot dogs were $5 hot dogs that I got for $2. So tomorrow, so now these are $5. The chicken is fit is ten dollars. That's fifteen dollars as opposed to seven. Some so you know it makes a big difference when you do this all the time. And so what I like to make is I like to make pigs in a blanket. So you just take your biscuit mix, make a biscuit, roll it out, wrap your um, hot dog in it, or uh, corn tortillas or fry bread. So maybe you don't feel like making fry bread, but if you do, it's really good to wrap your hot dogs in. And I have two uh, potatoes left, so I could make some mashed potatoes and some sauerkraut. So basically that is what I ate to, that is not what I ate. I'm gonna show you in a minute. And then yesterday, I made potato salad out of one potato and uh, one egg. And so what I started doing is keeping um, beets in a can in my refrigerator. And then I had an extra egg, so I made some deviled eggs and that's my potato salad. And so um, that's for tonight. So I just wanted to mention again, the markdown meat. I mean, uh, today, because it was Thanksgiving, I went kind of early and all the food was really good. But mainly, I was just looking for markdown food. But I did buy um, eggs for over $5 because that's how much they are. And I have to have eggs when I'm trying to diet. And then I bought toilet paper for $5.99. And honestly, that's a pretty good deal on toilet paper. I hate toilet paper. It's so expensive. The birds use a lot of toilet paper, you guys. I'm not lying. Those two left it constantly. You know, that's pets for you, though. So now I want to mention what I made for lunch. Okay, I bought this. Here's another example. I bought these, uh, this meat for $7.82 marked down from $10.43. It was um, bone in beef chuck short ribs, flanken style. So I, I learned about these on the carnivore channel. And they also uh, say get brisket. And I was never one for brisket, but actually the reason is, is because when you're on the carnivore diet, you're trying to get a little bit more uh, fat in your meat. So um, my, um, my uh, flanken ribs had a lot of little bones. And, I, and so my idea was to get the bone marrow out of them because uh, that is one good way to get stem cells, which not, you know, it's not as bad as. So what I try to do is extract the bone marrow out of the little rib bones. See these little things? So this is actually good. Um, all it was was, um, I put, that's carn, it's called carnivore soup. So um, I'm looking for meat with bones. And then if I have enough bones, I'm making this carnivore soup. So I just put, okay, when I'm on the carnivore diet, I try to eat one little pat of butter and I cut it in little pieces. So I can only eat half a pat because I'm not used to eating raw butter by itself without homemade bread. <laughs> But I know I need certain nutrition to live long and enough protein. And I'm trying to get stem cells because when they start to deplete in your old age, it's bad news. So um, 
I had the little bones, I had a half a pat of butter, and I covered them with water, and I, I brought them up to a boil, then I turned them down, and I just kept boiling and boiling and boiling, and I added more water, but then eventually all the water kind of boiled down, and I just had like some, some uh, fat in the bottom. So I sprinkled a little flour, like I always do, and then I started adding this uh, beef broth. Walmart, that's a good price. And that's how I came up with my carnivore soup. I just added a little bit at a time. You can make it thicker. So the idea is I want to be pursuing um, bone marrow food, like sardines. I'll, I'll tell you the rest of them when I think of them. Okay, so now that was the discussion on buying your meat um, half price, but you can also buy dairy, not so much eggs. So um, now on the life extension diet, you need two cups of milk per day. And this diet was, it's nothing new. It was designed uh, to prolong the life of older people and to keep you healthy. Uh, so four days a week, eat three to four ounces cans of small sardines. That is hard to do every other day. I think today was the day, and I said not today. On one other day, have salmon, canned or fresh. On still another day, have shrimp. I did that. Lobster, squid, clams, or oysters. On the remaining day, eat any other kind of fish. So, um... You know, we've been cautioned against mercury, but the small fishes are pretty um, safe and the dangers of not enough, like look how haggard I need. I need bone, bone marrow. <laughs> In other words, you must have seafood seven times a week. I'm thinking of buying big slabs of salmon. That's not too disagreeable. Eat calves liver once a week, still haven't eaten. One or two twice a week have beets, so that's why I'm keeping beets in my refrigerator. Um, beet juice or borscht. Uh, I think borscht would be better than beet juice. Once a week have a side of lentils, peas, lima beans, or soybeans. Each day... Eat at least one of the following, asparagus, radishes, onions, scallions, mushrooms, spinach, cauliflower, or celery. Each day, take one strong multivitamin after each meal and ask for therapeutic strength. Each day, drink two glasses of milk, preferably skim. So what I did was I froze milk and it was in my freezer and then last year, I bought several of these large boxes of chocolate milk. And so you might have a hard time drinking two cups of milk, but two cups of chocolate milk is not too hard to drink. So I wanted to mention that. And then I go through my stockpile around once a month or so, but not like I've been doing. I have these, uh, I have major messes and minor messes. The food storage is a major mess, and the eBay was kind of a major mess. Now, I know I have to clean it up this week, so I'm having to sacrifice everything, and it's unpleasant. Um, each day, drink a glass of fruit or vegetable juice. So these are, are all things that should be habitual to keep us in good health. Each day, drink at least four glasses of water, more in the summer. So take a look at that. And then there's the foods that contain the, the stem cells. Okay, one of the older ladies went on the carnivore, fasted for 30 days, and was drinking her own urine. I am rejecting that. But that is even not that, that's not, a long time ago, I took pregnant cow urine, shots to lose weight 
Okay, so, okay, so two cups of milk per day, and I froze mine, and I also froze, uh, you know, I, this is one of the ways I'm getting my freezer down, getting stuff like this out of it. Looks, I will drink it, I won't force myself to drink it, two cups a day. All right, so, okay, think about getting your milk when it's a good deal and then just freeze it if it's too much. Cheese marked down. So my freezer has a lot of cheese, so I'm not buying any more cheese. I'm eating the cheese down, and then the only thing that's going to be in my freezer is meat. Like the only thing that's maybe some fruit, some fresh fruit maybe. The only thing in my stockpile is cans. Nothing's going to happen to those cans. So what I plan on doing is neating them, them up, packing them up, and then I can cover them up and they're out of the way until after the first of the year. Okay, uh, and then eggs. I can't find really good egg deals. Uh, today, one carton was $5.19, so I came up with two flats, one at the beginning and one at the middle of the month but today the uh, cartons had an extra week so i i spent about 60 more cents 519 now i want to mention growing a garden so i saved my my meat container and these are wet paper towels and these are my 15 beans so i'm going to sprout them and they take two weeks to sprout my my plants are growing pretty good out there and if you cover them with the baggie you still need to uh, get bring your um, paper towels out and keep them damp but this really helps hold the moisture in so your sprouts don't get um, don't get um, dried out so okay I already told you about the, the meat which was the bone the bone broth. I'd say probably the best way to make it is a crock pot. I got to get my crock pot and my uh, air fryer out. And then tomorrow I'm probably going to make some hot dog stuff. Okay. Now I want to report on this unsavory rape, rape case in France. Okay, what happened is this woman's husband periodically, I don't know how often, drugged her, and then many men would rape her. And this went on over a period of time, and finally he got caught. And he, he said it, he was uh, molested as a boy, and he was sorry. But they said probably the sentence is going to be 20 years to life. And I thought, that is the most ridiculous thing I have ever had, I've ever heard. Why even give him a trial this <laughs> so asinine but yes that's going on this goes back to what we were talking about the reason the evil spirits are so evil if they're continuously evil over and that's why the evil is getting worse in the world and this guy was continuously evil and he just got more and more out of control until he was uh, caught and probably the only reason he was crying is because now he was in big trouble. Okay, now I want to talk to you about, oh, in Gaza, there's a terrible flower shortage. So this week, this month, next month, I will be buying 20 pounds of flour, probably in 10 pound bags. The flour is all so bad that there's only one bakery in all of Gaza. It's a pitiful situation, and I'm not surprised. And we're going to be seeing more of these famines, and that is why when if you get extra money for your taxes, that's when you want to stock up on food. Don't buy a TV. Buy yourself a few pallets of food from Costco. Now, what I am working on is non-foods. Okay, one of the reasons I think I see the seniors are having so much trouble is it's not just the food. You can buy your food marked down, but the non-foods, I'm trying to do $50 a week, including gas. 
So now if you know that the gas and the utilities and the inflation is going to spike, uh, then you know you need to cut costs, not misery making. So I, I made a list of all the non-foods I could think of, and I, I identified four of them that's hard to reduce, if not impossible. Toilet paper, I mentioned not $5.99. Bird food, 20 bucks. Haircuts, that's, you know, I have to get haircuts. And dry cleaning bags. You know, uh, last year I bought, no, the year before last, I bought a bunch of these kind of sweaters. And last year it was striped sweaters. And I cleaned them in dry cleaning bags. So then, um, bottled water, 50 cents. Dish soap, I usually buy the cheap stuff. Rubber gloves, Dollar Tree. Foil, Dollar Tree. Large baggies, Dollar Tree. Laundry detergent. I usually get the pods now. I find the cheap ones. Like sometimes you can get buy one, get one free at Ralph's. Bath soap is like $5 for four bars now. It used to be $1.25 for three. Shampoo, conditioner, face cream, lotion, toothpaste, dental floss, dental threads, trash bags, Diet Coke. So uh, when my car got a loose battery cable, I didn't have very much water or Diet Coke. I go, wow, you like to live on the edge. Deodorant, hair color, um, every other time I use the Dollar Tree um, hair color. So this, this is the Dollar Tree hair color that I get on at $1.25, but every other time I use Revlon, which is cheap too at $4. Because if you use the Dollar Tree one all the time, your hair stars look really bad. But it'll work every other time okay. Uh, lotion, sleeping pills, Benadryl, uh, bandages. Also, they're saying over-the-counter drugs. So now, uh, the other day I had a birthday and I had to buy wrapping paper, bows, and tape. So that adds up, especially if you're on some kind of fixed income. I have a birthday, I usually spend about $100, Christmas $200. Crafts, like flowers, home decor, and clothes. I don't even figure clothes in because I buy them a uh, half price at a thrift store. So now if you slash your utilities and you slash your gasoline, okay, what I do is I just have the lights on in here and the rest of the house is dark because this is a very small room but I'm gonna be trying to slash my utilities further. And with gas, I don't go anywhere except for the gym and back. And if I need something, I stop on the way. I don't make any special uh, special uh, trips anywhere. Okay, now I wanna talk about uh, these theories about the end of the world. I don't think so. Once, the church is removed from the earth, then the whole earth is essentially in darkness. And I don't think it's time for that because of John 4, 35. Okay, there was um, a Sumerian woman by the well, and Jesus asked her to give him a drink. And she said, why do you ask me? Because most the Jews did not really have anything to do with the Samaritans because they had intermarried with uh, Gentiles. And he said, if you knew who asked you, you would get, you would ask for living water. I think she got it for him. So he, he finally, a lot of, a lot of people come to believe because of the miracles and, and the age of miracles is not over. And I was talking to a lady yesterday and I go, when you get a, uh, you're going to pray with a believer, pray big. So anyway, um, then, so um, he, he said, you know, some reference to her husband. She said, I don't have a husband. He said, basically, you've had three. So that, anyway, so she told everybody and he said, look, the fields are white because they were coming uh, to hear the word. And we have the, we have 
countries with billions of people. And, and we were talking yesterday and they said uh, they have heard. And I'm thinking, no, I don't think that the whole world, the billions of people in India, the billions of people in uh, China have been exposed to the Christian way yet. So I don't, that's why. And so now uh, back to the living water real quick. Uh, this is why I have some of this stuff's hereditary is some of it is the way you're raised. So yes, we had a party and one of the uh, men was from Germany and um, mention was made that my family was uh, from Switzerland and he said, you seem English. And I thought, no. So my grandmother's grandfather, straight from Switzerland, he was a pious religious guy anyway, and he asked God if he could just drink some living water. I don't know if the life was hard or he wanted to know. And so a small river, little trickle, came out of the sky and came into his mouth. And then his old grandmother said she had a vision that two men were coming. And so two Mormon missionaries came. It was very cold, so they were waiting for them. They went out, they cut a hole in the ice, they baptized him, and he had been previously a hunchback. And when he came out of the water, he was healed. So he had been able to drink of this living water. So we had knowledge of this. So that is why I have a lot of faith in healing. And if you want to piss people off, you know, healing will do it. People get so mad. I don't know why. It can't hurt to pray, right? So, um, so he was healed. And, and then... After having been a hunchback and healed, he, he made his way to America, Canada, America, Missouri, and across the plains to Nevada with several women. <laughs> so, so the thing about it is, is yeah, times are perilous and times are bad in, in some places really bad. I think one of the worst places is Gaza, and the other bad place is uh, the Ukraine. Both bad. So it can't hurt to pray for these people. Um, not sure what's going to happen in either place, but it's not good. So um, this is one of the reasons I think the, the fields are white. And there's been, you know, with people coming to here, and there has been um, revivals. And another thing I heard a prophecy is that a lot of the revival is going to come out of these people on the streets who have had an awful time, who have had no money and um, resources. And I want to mention something. There's this guy I know, not well, but... He's in very bad shape. And, you know, he said, he said, maybe now that Trump is elected, I can get some help at the VA. And I thought, if he just goes to get some help, you know, but he has confidence that things maybe are going to get better. So I'm thinking that's kind of encouraging because maybe some of these people will accept help. Maybe they don't feel like something bad's going to happen to them. Um, you know, there's going to be some kind of help to them. So that's another example of the fields are white. And you can't say who knows where these people come from. And I happen to have met quite a few and somehow. And this one I know, I couldn't believe it. He, he somehow pulled himself together, got a job at Walmart, and got a car, and he had a credit score of 700 so you know you can't look you go you lazy stupid bum you know you don't you know what i'm saying so it's kind of encouraging a little bit encouraging what i see and also never never underestimate people you don't know never and then if you should have a chance encounter with someone 
and they say something that's even a little bit smart, take heed. <laughs> I met this lady at the gym, and, and she was a Christian too, and uh, um, I found her to be really, really um, good. And she said, you know, it's all about the Bible. What does the Bible say? And I thought, yeah, that is the best way to stay straight is what does the Bible say? <laughs> and then do it, even if it's not that easy. Um, because then you go back to the longer something goes on, the harder it is to get rid of it. Like, say, alcoholism. You know, it gets worse and worse, but still... Like the guy who told you got the job. He's doing pretty well. I cannot believe it. He was a wreck. And then the other one who said, well, maybe he can get some help now. I mean, he's a veteran. A lot of these people are. So, okay, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Bye, you guys.